right good afternoon and welcome to mass Atoka online class in today's video we'll continue from where we stopped on solving physics workbook okay so we as we stopped at question number 71 and question number 71 said uh what what is the coefficient so what is the coefficient of friction what is the coefficient of friction between between a wood of mass 1.6 kg and a horizontal a horizontal surface comma if the limiting if the limiting frictional force is eight newton okay now solution if you want to draw it let me explain just by drawing but even if you don't want to draw it now the mass of this uh the mass of any substance acts downward so the mass of this substance is acting this way so this is where the mass is so the weight is going to be 1.6 times 10 which is what 16 newton okay this is the weight then if a if a body applies a force here the frictional force will not be moving it the other way so the frictional force here is um is 8 newton all right so now the mu mu coefficient of static friction is what frictional force all over the normal reaction okay now the normal reaction is going to go this way this is the normal reaction the normal reaction is equal to the to the weight of this body but in opposite direction that is how that is how the force applied is equal to the friction but in opposite direction okay uh -huh. so that is how we do that so we now have that that mu is equal to what uh, the frictional force is 8 over what 16 which is what i think uh, 0 0.5 I think it's 0 0.5, right? Maybe 0 0.2. 8 divided by 16. 8 divided by 16. Okay, 0 0.5. So 0 0.5. There, there is no SI unit. In fact, another thing you should consider is that what? The coefficient of static friction is always less than 1. So this is always less than 1. If you say 16 divided by, by 8, you're going to get 2. And 2 is not less than 1, so it's not correct. So it's going to be less than 1. That's another thing, another trick that will help you to know what to do. But sometimes students need to confuse which one will be up and which one will be down. So if you remember this thing I just said now, you will now know the one that will be up and the one that will be down. So question number uh, uh, 72 said, okay, mention scientific instruments or tools used to measure accurately a three a decimal place in centimeter. Okay, we use the vinyl caliper. In measuring it via vinyl caliper okay so that is that you can make your own research 72 73 73 they write down so write this the standard units of the three major fundamental quantities the three major fundamental quantities are uh, mass measured in kilogram length measured in meter and then time measured in seconds so that is that we go to question number 74 74 said uh, question number 74 said 105 newton 105 newton is equivalent equivalent to how many dimes okay so don't forget that one newton is equal to 10 raised to power i think five right 10 raised to power five dime have you 10 raised to power yes 10 raised to power five dimes okay so now put this 105 to the side of newton 105 newton will be equal to what x what dimes so cross multiply so my x will now be what 105 times 10 raised power what 5 so which will give you 1.05 times 10 raised power 7 dimes okay so that is very very simple to calculate we move to the next question question number 75 question number 75 said change change velocity of 900 kilometer per hour to SI units. 
okay solution now 900 kilometer per hour is simply 900 times 1000 divided by 60 times 60 so if you do that you're going to get um, 250 meter per second so that is that we move to the next question question number 76 now question number 76 said solve solve for the dimension so for the dimension of g in in the newton newton law of gravitation equation okay so they gave us that f is equal to g m m over r squared so and i know that my f here is equal to what uh, mass times acceleration due to gravity is equal to what g m m over what r squared so my g here will not be what m here can cancel one of the m so my g will not be g r squared over what m so which is what my my g is what measure the meter per second a meter will give you l per second square sorry per second square will give you t raised per what minus two so radius is measured in in length as well so in meters and meters giving us length length squared all over what m so if you now bring it you have m this one coming up will now be l is power minus one l raised power one plus uh two give you three then t raised power what minus two so that is the dimension of g so we move to question number 77 <coughs> So question number 77, question number 77 said, uh, a density, a density of 1000 kilogram meter cube in CGS unit is, okay solution that is for us to convert it to gram per meter uh gram per cm okay we need to convert it to gram per cm so how do you convert it to gram per cm uh for 77 convert it to gram per cm i know that 1000 kilogram mm, per meter cube is equal to converting kilogram to gram multiply by 1000 because k means 1000 so one 1000 times another 1000 okay divided by converting meter to centimeter is a uh, multiplying by 100 so i have 100 but it is raised to power 3 so I have raised to power 3 so which is what 1000 times 1000 all over 100 times 100 times 100 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 so i have 1 gram per cm cube okay one gram per cm cube is the answer so 78 so 78 will give you they say what what is the equivalent equivalent of 10 joules in erg per sec <coughs> okay me i know that one watt one watt is equal to what 10 raised to power 7 um, erg per sec so i don't know about joules so i don't know if it's a, an error in question but you can do your own research you can do your own research i was thinking that this will be 10 watts so but do your own research you can browse to check what is 10 joules in erg per sec okay so we'll go to question number 79 question number 79 Question number 79 said three forces, three forces of magnitude 12 Newton, comma, 6 Newton, and 5 Newton act on a body in the direction, in the direction north comma south 
and northeast okay respectively then i say the magnitude the magnitude of the resultant force is dash okay solution now they gave us a uh, north they gave us north south north south and the north east so like this so the first one they gave us uh, the first one they gave us 12 they gave us 12 12 is in north so let's say that here is 12 in newton then uh who again six is in south six is in south yes yeah, so i have six here six newton then um five is in northeast northeast is here so i have five here five newton okay so where would the resultant be okay now see where would where the resultant would be um the problem now is that we don't know the angle the angle between them so how do we resolve it so the problem here is that we don't know the angle between them We don't know the angle between them. So, had it been I know the angle here, then we can find the resultant force. But since I don't know the angle, so we can try to find out um, that. But here, the, to resolve these two, this is opposite to each other. So, I'm having that the this one is going to give me um, 6 here, 6 Newton, this minus this, because this is plus, this is negative. But in this one now, if this one is like this now, I have that this one is um, uh, 5 Newton. 5 newton so the resultant force pass through their middle but the problem is that we don't know the angle between them unless maybe it passes through the middle if it passes through the middle then let me assume that here is 45 okay if you assume that here is 45 then that is the only thing that you can do but since they didn't tell us so that's the problem of this question okay so question number eight where i'm going to stop so this question don't i will check sir so equally check and then tell me what you think the answer is in the comment section so the question number 80 said um, let me write here because if i write there i'm always blocking the viewers so okay so question number 80 Question number eight is said a stone a stone is projected is projected upward at at an angle of thirty degrees to the horizontal. from the top of a tower of height 100 meters and it hits the ground it hits the ground at a point at a point Q then I say if the initial velocity of projection initial velocity of projection is 100 meter per second then then I say calculate the maximum height okay so for us to calculate the maximum height, first of all, we can decide to draw it. So if we are drawing this thing now, let me say that um, um, this is the top of the building. So from here to here, did they give us 
the height of the building. Okay, 100. So from here to here is 100 meter. Huh? The velocity, sorry. What am I saying? 100 meter. When they give us 100 meter, okay, they say that a stone of mass, a stone is produced at an angle of this thing, okay, from the top of a tower of height 100. Okay, so let me say that here is the top of this tower. So from here to here is your 100 meters, okay. So and this thing is projected from this top like this, but then letter fell on the floor. So we need to get here, okay, uh, letter fell on the floor. This is the horizontal floor okay so now we should have that that here is the maximum height of projection not the total let me say the height the, the highest height this thing will attain okay so but the height we are looking for the maximum height of projection is uh that is from here to this place but let us calculate here using our normal formula so here is our our theta which is 30 degrees Okay, 30 degrees. So the normal small h is equal to you know, what's the formula for h? U squared sine squared theta over 2g. Yes, u squared sine squared theta over what? 2g. Okay, so don't forget the formula. So what do we have? Our u squared is uh is being projected with uh 100 meter per second. So I have 100 squared, okay, sine. 30 all squared divided by 2 times 10. So if you do everything there, you are going to have uh, 125 meters. All right. So, but the maximum height will not be the H plus that 100 meters, which is what? 125 meters plus that 100 because the thing fell on the floor. Okay. And so 100 meters. So, which is going to be uh, 225, 225 meters. So, Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and then comment. I need the answer to that particular question I skipped. So tell me the answer on the comment section. Bye-bye.